Hi everybody, it's Dr. Lisa Schwartz with the Breast Cancer Straight Talk group. And today we're going to do part two in our series of uh, cancer and sugar and the relationship there. Um, yesterday, or actually a couple days ago, I answered a question about uh, whether or not cancer feeds off of sugar. And so go look at part one video to um, get that answer. But the short answer is it's not quite that simple. Uh, sugar feeds all the cells in your body, and you need it. But what is probably most important is the way that your body processes that sugar, and specifically how quickly it's absorbed. Um, so today we're going to talk about the glycemic index and glycemic load. Um, so the glycemic index is a measure of how quickly the sugar from a food gets into your bloodstream. And uh, the way that a glycemic index number is determined is that um, healthy individuals were fed 50 grams of carbohydrates from various foods and then their blood sugar levels were measured. So you could see how quickly that food caused blood sugar to go up in that healthy individual. And glycemic index is measured on a scale of 0 to 100 with uh, 50 grams of carbohydrate from plain old white table sugar being 100. And to give you some perspective, uh, white bread is basically 70. Uh, whole wheat bread, a whole grain bread rather, is about 50. So the um, slower that carbohydrates and sugars are absorbed from a food, the lower their glycemic index. Well, Glycemic index doesn't give the whole story. For example, um, carrots. Um, one carrot has only six grams of carbohydrate in it. So in order to get 50 grams of carbohydrate, you'd have to eat more than eight carrots. And that's just not a normal serving. So the glycemic load actually takes that into account. The glycemic load looks at how rapidly blood sugar rises after one serving of a particular food, which is a little bit more reasonable thing to look at. So for glycemic load, foods that have a measure, a glycemic load of less than 10 are considered to have a low glycemic load. Foods that have a glycemic load of more than 20 are considered to have a high glycemic load. Now to give you some examples, um, like for example, watermelon. Watermelon has a glycemic index of about 80, which is pretty high. But you'd have to eat an awful lot of watermelon to get 50 grams of carbohydrates. So the glycemic load from watermelon is only about 4, which makes it a really good food to eat. So who needs to worry about glycemic load and glycemic index? Well, diabetics certainly do. And if you've been diagnosed with diabetes, somebody sat down with you and discussed the importance of watching your carbohydrates. Um, but this is a way to sort of classify those carbohydrates that you're taking in. Everybody has to take in some carbohydrates. But this way you can pick healthier carbohydrates for you. Because if you're diabetic, what happens is that if you eat a high glycemic load food, the sugar gets into your bloodstream and it stays elevated longer because your insulin can't get it into the cells and out of the bloodstream quickly enough because you have something called insulin resistance. We talked about that in the last video that uh, patients with type 2 diabetes, um, their cells are not as sensitive to insulin. So it takes more insulin to get the same amount of sugar into a cell and out of the bloodstream. And what happens when you have higher levels of sugar in your bloodstream is that leads to that chronic inflammation that we talked about. Chronic inflammation leads to a higher risk of a bunch of chronic diseases, including cancer. Okay, so anything we can do to lower chronic inflammation is a good thing. So especially for diabetics, choosing carbohydrates that have a lower glycemic load is a wise thing to do. And if you're a person um, that has sort of normal activity levels, 
it also is going to be helpful for you to pick a lower glycemic load food because you want to avoid those high spikes in blood sugar. Even if you have enough insulin to get it into the cells, it doesn't help to have a high spike in your blood sugar. Lastly, um, endurance athletes actually, when they're performing, they need high glycemic load foods. So um, things like uh, Gatorade are actually in the intermediate range. They're in that between 10 and 20. Um, but that's because those carbohydrates are being used immediately by endurance athletes. Now, if you go out and walk for 30 minutes, do you need a sports drink? No, you do not. If you go out and run for more than an hour, you probably do. You're, you're going to deplete your um, immediate stores of sugar in both your liver and in your muscles, and you're going to need to replace that in order to keep running or, or um, even to feel less fatigued right after you finish your hour-long run. Okay, so in summary, <laughs> um, not all carbohydrates are bad. The glycemic index is a measure of how quickly 50 grams of carbohydrate from a food gets into your bloodstream. The glycemic load is a measure of how quickly one serving of that food gets into your bloodstream. So it's just a more reasonable thing to look at. And thirdly, um, diabetics and folks with normal activity levels, you probably would be wise to choose lower glycemic load foods to decrease your risk of chronic inflammation, which leads to an ri increased risk of other chronic diseases, including cancer. Okay? So um, that's another uh, link between sugar and cancer. And we've got a few more of these to discuss. Um, if you're not already a member of the Breast Cancer Straight Talk group, come join us. It's a free group on Facebook. And I try to get in here and do a little bit of teaching on a live video each day and to answer your questions. So come join us. Thanks.